Um, okay, so uh, we, so some of you guys uh, are aware that uh, we send mission teams out every year, different parts of the world, and we just got back from a trip uh, to Kenya, Africa. And so I'm going to ask our Kenya team to come up because do you guys want to hear some stories from the trip? Because, you know, we, whenever you travel, how many of you know, like when you travel, we had a team of 14 that went, and some of them are at the Pickerington campus, so they're not here this morning, but if I can have you guys come forward, and I know that maybe you guys are just writing huge checks and it's taking a lot of time, but when you're done, just come forward, and uh, um, yeah, just come on up on the stage, guys. These guys are amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited seeing you guys again. So we've been back. We got back uh, a week ago on Friday, and uh, we're about eight, nine days back. And I think everyone, are you guys all on regular sleeping schedules now? Ish? Ish, yeah. I know that Avery fell asleep at CSSM on the sidewalk last week <laughs> outside. But like the, the funny part about that is that like, so at CSSM he took a break outside and just laid down and fell asleep on the concrete. What I love is like no one woke him. That like, that like, like we have a culture that's like, oh, he's just like soaking in the Lord or something. Like he was, it was just jet lagged and he fell asleep. So that was amazing. I just found out about that last night. Um, but hey, we just want to share stories because I tell you what, like there's just something about Jesus that just infectious when we share testimonies, when we share even highlights of transformation when we're on these trips. Uh, a team of 14 of us, a group, uh, Channing Lawrence uh, and some others who are at Zion Pickerington aren't here this morning. Um, but uh, we'd love to just share some of these testimonies. Before I do, I just would really want to thank you as a church for sending us because we do individual fundraising. So all these guys uh, raise support individually. And I just thank you guys because you're a generous church. And, and the, each of them raised all the finances to go. And you guys prayed us there and back. And there was even a report of, uh, of uh, an email that got sent around to some of our intercessors for prayer support. And we just thank you guys for responding and, and praying for that. And uh, it was a little funny. It was a little exaggerated, but that's okay because we needed your prayers. It was like one of those, like you guys heard the quote, like, like the rumor of my death has been largely exaggerated. <laughs> it was like that sort of thing. Like the whole team was rampant sick and people were telling me. I was like, oh no, it's just David. He got violently ill. But... Uh, but we, you know, thank you, Jesus. Like, we all came back, uh, you know, in a good place. And uh, so I'm going to let these guys share. And so we'll just kind of go down. Um, can you guys see them? Are they, like, in the light? Yeah, can you guys step up a little bit? I know there's, like, stuff in the way. But all right, so uh, we'll just go down and share, you guys, just, like, one highlight from the trip. Uh, whether it's a testimony, uh, something that, you know, a moment of transformation when God may have done something that you saw. So just one highlight from the trip. And I know this is really hard. So, so here's what we want to do is we're all going to be like, well, this is what happened, but my real highlight is this, but my real highlight is this. So let's just try to, get to nail one highlight down. So this is Nancy. So Nancy, take us away. Good morning. Um, so the trip was amazing. Um, the one transformative moment that came to mind really corresponds with what was happening during worship this morning. Um, whenever I step out to pursue the promises of God, I become really aware of how I have no skills to get there. Um, so I, one night we were worshiping, and um, it was like the Lord was showing me. He, he came to me, and I was like, well, where are we going? And instead of, he just sat down next to me and put his arm around me. And I was just, in my head, I was just crying. And he was taking all the burdens from me of what I thought I should, I needed to do. Um, and, and so it was just so good. He just, he, instead of going, his priority was to be there with me and to me be, me be with him. And I'm like, well, is that enough? <laughs> I was asking him. And... And so I was like, well, I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I think, I think that'll be enough. And so I went to the church the next morning with the intentions of, like, I'm just going to pray and be with God. Um, even though there's, like, stuff I'd like to do, I'm just going to pray and lay everything else down and see if that's going to be enough. And so um, I just sat in the very back. I'm in the back praying. And the pastor comes up to me. And he's like, can you share a word of encouragement? And I'm like, when? He's like, 10 o'clock. And this was, like, 9.57. <laughs> so I, I thought about it and I was like I realized that in the time I had spent with the Lord he actually gave me a word that I felt was for the destiny of the church and so it is enough 
to just be with Jesus and let him just speak out what he's saying. So. And I just want to like encourage you guys that like as we're sharing these testimonies, if you're like, like God's going to minister to you while we're sharing these. You guys know that, right? That like allow like some of these things, like if that's you, if you're like, man, I would have a hard time doing that. God's releasing a testimony to you because he's probably calling you out of that place. So anyway, that just, that, you know, keep your hearts really open right now because this stuff is amazing. So go ahead. I'll try my best to keep this short. <laughs> Um, mine's pretty much like that. It's like you go with the intention and they all warn me like, you know, who had gone before. It's like you think that you're going to do so much for these people. And I think I had prepared myself and prepared myself for that. And then, you know, you go there and I think it was the first or second night um, we had um, like a group setting with the kids and they had Katy, um pray for us. And I just, I just lost it. Like this girl is, I think, 12 or 13, I think, something like 14. Oh man. Anyways, she, um, it's just the past of these kids, like the things that they've been through, and then to have her just like bell out a song and to intercede for us and pray for us. I'm like, can I even do that? Like for these kids. And so I just lost it. I ran back home in the mud, like to our house. And uh, Channing was the first person to come in. And of course I'm like laid out on the floor, like a mess. And I just, I didn't care. I was like, you know, I'm a mess right now. And she was like, Stace, just, just break. She was like, she reminded me of, um, you know, when Jesus went to Lazarus, she was like, if you recall before he did anything, he wept, he broke. And she was like, I think that we get so strong and so authoritative, like we have all authority. And we do, but it's just in that moment that I think you're more like Jesus when you weep, when you're with these people and when you're, you know, and show that feeling and that love. And so the rest of the week, as they probably saw me during worship in the morning, I'm like on the floor, you know, a mess. But it's like he kept showing me clay. And it's like you can't you know, mold clay when it's stiff and when it's, you know, and it's like, God's like, if you had it all together, you'd be like a Pharisee. Like if you walked around and all together and all, you know, of the glory and everything, it's like, I would rather be on the floor cleaning up my tears with like my shirt than to have it all together. And so after that, you know, it just, it just broke and there was healings and everything else, but all that them explain that because there's there's too many so <laughs> it was good so I had the opportunity to go with my sister on the trip and if you ever get an opportunity to go with a family member um, I'm the emotional one too I'm sorry but um, this was amazing so I got to see my little sister in a whole new light that God um, meant to happen. So um, I'm so proud of her and the gifts that have come out of her and the gifts that have come out of me from where we've come from um, has just been amazing. And so for me, that was something on this trip that God was like, um, my power is in you and you can lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Um, so that was huge for me. Uh, and, and I'm a teacher. And so like everyone has been kids and teachers alike this week have been coming up to me like, we want to hear about your trip. We want to know about your journey. What happened? And all I could say to them this whole week is it's just been life changing. I, I couldn't even find the words to say because there's been such a transformation in my heart. So um, I know I'm going back for sure, but this has been so amazing. Um, a year, I know I talk a lot. Sean's going to be like, go on. <laughs> um, but, but a year ago, before I even knew about this trip, before it was even announced on the stage, um, here in worship, God gave me um, a vision. And that vision was um, of Kenya, and I didn't know it. And I could see the red dirt road, and I saw a cow crossing the road, and I was like, what in the world is this? And I saw um, a huge group of children, um, little black children in front of me, and God was telling me to get the remnant and to save the remnant. And then we took off, and we went under a tree. And as we were driving, 
on Thursday, and everybody that was in the van with me can attest to this, but on Thursday we were driving to this village of Mauko, which is a very dark village that we visited a couple of times, which they've started a church and it's amazing, and I'll let the rest of the team tell you about that. But as we're driving, I almost yelled at um, our bus driver, Ben, to stop the van because my vision came completely to fruition. And it was all there, the cow and everything. I was just like, oh my gosh. So it was, it was amazing. So um, God is so powerful. God is so good. Um, and yeah, there, it's, it's just an experience that I, there's too much to tell. So I'll pass it. Um, I wanted to share a testimony from when we did outreach into one of the local villages. Um, we had actually met up with Francesca, who is a, a believer in one of the villages. And I guess I went in with expectation of like going to villages and doing evangelism. But we met with another believer, and she took us from like hut to hut of her friends. And we were able to encourage other believers and call out their destiny and prophesy over their children. Um, and I just like... I guess just remembering the importance of encouraging and building up those around you. Um, yeah. And so she took us to one, one hut where there was an elderly couple sitting outside and the grandfather, his name was Gabriel, he had like a kind of plaster cast on his leg. So of course we're all like, we gotta pray for his leg. Um, and we were talking to the mother, the grandmother, and she was already a believer, but Gabriel was not. So we had a chance to share the gospel with him. And as we we're sharing the gospel with him, their grandson came up um, and we're leading Gabriel through the salvation prayer. And um, after that, Rachel and I were actually praying over his leg. And Rachel was like, oh my gosh, I like, did you feel that? She's like, the bones are moving. I was like, oh my gosh. So we like asked our translator, who at this point is going between three different people because Rachel and I were praying with Gabriel Luke was with the grandson who actually asked um, after he came up, heard the salvation. He told Luke he wanted to receive the Lord as well. So Luke was praying salvation with him. And Leah was with the grandmother praying healing over her jaw um, and filling her with the Holy Spirit. So our translator comes back over and Rachel's like, he's got to be healed. Like ask him how he's feeling. And he told us that it was better, but it wasn't 100%. So we started praying again. And then I started feeling the bone move. Rachel felt the bone move again through this plaster cast. And we looked at each other, we're like, he's got to be healed. He's got to be healed. <laughs> Keep praying. And when we felt it stop moving, we asked him again, and he said the pain was gone. Um, so we believed it was completely healed. I mean, it took everything in us not to try to, like, break this cast off of him. <laughs> um, we didn't. But um, just, like, the, the testimony of the Lord, like, moving in so many different areas, yet in the same spot, and our translator going just to different, you know, different groups, but it was like the whole, the whole of it was just so incredible to see how just the goodness of the Lord was like breaking through um, and just brought full like salvation to this family. So God is so good. <laughs> That was like one of my favorite moments too, because this poor translator is like going from three groups, like he's like helping save this young son and then getting this lady filled with the Holy Spirit and then Larissa is he healed yet? Like, so yeah, this poor translator. Um, so that was amazing. Um, I would have to say like one of the other highlights from this trip was uh, there was a small team of us that had the opportunity to go to a medium's house. And uh, the way they practice there is like they have witch doctors and they have mediums. And so mediums are like, lower, but they still, you know, contact the dead, and the way they practice is they, like, slice your arm and, like, put stuff in it so that it cleanses your blood. So we had found out through people where this medium lived, and so a small group of us went to the medium's hut, and, um, you know, by the end of this trip, we have probably, like, preached the gospel, like, hundreds of times, and, uh, so we were in this medium's hut, and uh, we were sitting in like a U, and he was sitting and like facing us. He was like the only one facing us. And uh, I remember um, one of the ladies on the trip, she, uh, it's Becky Murray, she, she was speaking to him um, about Jesus. And uh, it was, you know, the introduction of like kind of who he is and 
why he's significant, obviously, and what he's done for him. Um, and during this time, while she was speaking to this medium, we were listening, and uh, for me, I'm just sitting there listening as well, and um, I see Jesus walk into the hut and sit behind us, and uh, I've, I've never seen Jesus before, and, um, and so some of the team, I like start to instantly cry, and uh, some of the team members are like, this is the same gospel we preached all week, like, are you getting saved right now? <laughs> like, um, and so I'm like, try, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and this man just sat there, and he received it, and um, what was really cool was, you know, Jesus comes in many forms, he comes as a healer, and um, he comes as a protector and a comforter and, you know, a provider. And in that moment, like when I saw Jesus walk into the room and he kind of just stood with us, uh, he came as the protector and um, he protected us from this medium. But it was really cool because he was really specific in saying, I actually came to protect this medium's family. And so uh, while Becky's speaking, Jesus is like kind of just standing with us and, um, and so when she was done, this medium didn't say anything the whole time she spoke. And uh, when she was done, she's like, do you want to receive Jesus in your heart? And he like sat there for a moment, and then he's like, yeah, I want to receive Jesus. So yay, God. So he received Jesus, and it was actually cool because each of the team members that got to go got to speak over him. And so one of the things was I got to say to him, you know, like, that Jesus you just asked into your heart, that Jesus that came down and died for your sins, the one that loves you, the king in heaven, just walked into your hut, and he's protecting your family. I know you know what darkness looks like. I know you've heard stories, but he's here to tell you that he's protecting your family. He's guarding your family. There should be no fear, no nightmares, no attacks. Like, so there's like this whole thing, and so like it was actually a really cool moment for us because we got to really bless this guy, this guy who practices, you know, witchcraft, essentially, and, uh, and the king of heaven, like, walked into his hut. So it was just amazing. So, yeah. So there was a lot that happened on this trip. As Sean said, I was very, very sick. It was terrible. But thank God that I recovered quickly. Um, this was my second time going on the trip, and, and God definitely did a lot. Uh, specifically, I spent a lot of time with the kids and I was just so amazed at how well they just loved us. Like, the whole team experienced that. And I was just asking, like, because some of the kids were very young, and I just, in my limited thinking, I'm like, how? Like, how can they love so well? And it was just to understand their stories and know that, like, they're deeply rooted in Jesus, and their foundation is Jesus, and they have nothing else. There's no other option. And that they love Jesus so well. So because of that, they're able to love us so well. And it was so good seeing that. And there's no doubt that they love Jesus. Like when you watch them praise and worship and, and just pray in general, like you just get touched. <laughs> you have no choice. And the spirit just moves. And it was incredible to see that. And what God kept repeating to me over and over was that there's no age limit in the kingdom of God. Like there is no age limit. And he just kept repeating it over and over. And I, I began to see that like walking through the villages, we'd see the elderly, and it's like, it's never too late for them to enter. Or being at the home, watching kids that are seven, eight years old wake up at five in the morning to go pray voluntarily um, was just very, very humbling, and just, it was kind of hitting me hard, because I'm like, I shouldn't have any excuses, you know? If they're able to do it, then we're able to do it, and it was just incredible, besides getting sick, but it was <laughs> amazing, a good trip, and I hope to be back one day. Yeah, this is my first time in Kenya, and it was an incredible trip. And it's really hard to even digest all that took place, as you can kind of tell from the past week and a half that we spent there. But I think for me, the, the most impactful thing was seeing these children that have come from such broken backgrounds and broken stories, and every single one just had a horrific story of their progression from their family and their childhood, and, and stories of murder and abuse, and we'll save you the details, but such incredible brokenness from such young children. And to see the Lord faithfully pursue their lives over the course of four, five, and six years and see them come into this place of being in this family at the king's home at this orphanage in Kenya was just incredible. And for me, they, the biggest thing that stuck out to me walking away from this trip was the fact that these kids here, they have nothing but Jesus, and he's all that they pursue, all that they need. 
And here in the West, we so often get distracted with so many different things that we settle for, and we miss out on the true riches of the kingdom by settling for those things here. And there's such a freedom in being in a place like this, this uh, orphanage in Kenya where it was just so simple. The gospel was just simple. It's just love. It's just transformation. It's just Jesus loving on us and seeing his love come and touch people in a simple way. And that was really, really powerful to see. So that for me really marked me. We've seen just the Lord's faithfulness in pursuing everybody's story and the regression that he's never done writing the story from day one on. So that was really incredible for me. Yeah, going off of what Luke said, um, I was most impacted on the trip just uh, by the love of the Father. Um, there was a, a young boy named Felix, and I don't think he's a homestay kid, but he, w- he was going to the school, and then he got sick, um, and so his grandmother took him to a witch doctor to get healed, and uh, I think he, he got demonized to some measure, and then so they had to basically had to stop going to school and it had been three or four months at that point when we were there that he was not in school anymore um, because this happened to him and so um, there had been some people that were pre- had been praying for him so when we actually showed up he was like he was good he was in his right mind he was happy um, clear-eyed um, but even as we approached their hut that day like I felt um, darkness like kind of around his grandmother, she was sitting out front, and I was just like, okay, huh. Like, I sensed it. And then um, we just loved on Felix. We sat in the hut with him, and we just spoke words of life over him and just invited him back to school and everything. And then um, for me, I was sitting there, like, angry, you know, because the grandmother had operated, and maybe she knew what she was getting into. Maybe she didn't, but she took him, and all this happened because of what she did. And so kind of like uh, there was some righteous anger there, but then after we loved on Felix for a while, we turned our attention to the grandmother, and she hadn't said anything. Her face had been like, I didn't see her make a single facial expression the whole time for the first 20 minutes we were there. Like she didn't move. Um, But we didn't like rebuke her, and we didn't like come against her. Um, we, We just like shared the gospel with her. And she's like, yeah, I've, I've never really heard that before. And we loved on her. And she received Jesus. And then, and then we asked him, can we pray for the Holy Spirit to come? And she said, yes, yeah, to fill you. And we talked to, him, talked to her about what that meant and everything. Um, and she said, yes. And uh, as we, we talked about Jesus with her, a storm rolled in. And like, as we were like saying Jesus and telling about Jesus, like the thunder started rumbling. And there hadn't been any wind yet, and we went to pray for her, for the Holy Spirit to come, and a big gush of wind came right in through the front door, and it was like all around all of us. Like, it was very, it was very uh, real. And um, (laughs) second quick story, same testimony, uh, of, (laughs) of what the Lord was doing in my heart, um, because I was like, I want to go be like, sure, come on, just like, devil, you can't be here, and da 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 da, and come against the enemy. But we loved on this woman because our, 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 our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And so we loved on the woman, and she received Jesus, and she received the Holy Spirit. And then a few nights later, every other night or so, we would have a movie night. And um, there was two kids, especially on the trip, I really connected with, and I was sitting next to one of them during the movie. And this is what I share with our team. A movie I would never watch. I didn't care for it. It was like animated Alvin and Chipmunks or something. Like, not my kind of movie. But um, we watched it with the kids. And I'm sitting next to George, or Georgie. He's like 14. And he's into it. And I was sitting next to him, so I let myself be into it. And this kid, he, I was just, like, I just realized, like, he had something I didn't have. Like, he was fully present. Like, he was just so happy to be there, so happy to be at movie night, so happy to be with his, his children homes, brothers and sisters, and so happy to be with the Mazungos and hang out. And um, so, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Bob Jones, and so the first time that he died, he was in heaven, and if I retell the account properly, he basically saw people in line going up to Jesus, and Jesus would say, did you learn to love? Um, 
And so that question came to me at, at the hut with the grandmother, like, wow, we didn't, I mean, we didn't come against the enemy and rebuke and shaka raka baka baka. We just like loved on this woman and she received Jesus. And then I'm here with this kid and just like this precious boy, beautiful smile. And every time there was like a funny moment in the movie, like I was like, I get to be his like older brother, his uncle, his father right now. So I'm just going to be fully present with him. And for these two hours, I'm just going to like love on him and let him teach me how to love. Um, and every time there was a funny moment, we would just turn and look into each other's eyes and we would just smile and we would just laugh. And this phrase was just washing over him like, did you learn to love? Did you learn to love? Um, and so I, I could say in a significant way on this trip, I, I learned to love a lot more. Yeah. So good. And so Pastor Jim kind of had a challenge for us that everyone who calls Zion their home to go on a mission trip, like well, at least once every three years. And that might be a daunting task to think about, but I'm just telling you, like God, show, like God pays for it financially. He shows up, he wrecks your life. And so you don't have to go to Africa for that to happen. But uh, I tell you what, uh, there's something that, about getting out of our day today where we just kind of experience and encounter God in, in a different way. And so, um, so what I want to do is, uh, can I share one of my testimonies? This is a quick one. This isn't like one, this isn't like part four, C, you know, like, so when we were there, I wasn't even there for this, I heard this, but a group of, a group from our team went out to a woman's hut, actually a large group, I think, went out to a woman's uh, uh, house and she was uh, like crippled, like in bed and unable to get up. And uh, the team prayed for her and, uh, and I didn't hear anything about this till the next day because the next day we got word that that woman was up and moving around and totally healed. And we found out that she was in bed for one year. She was bedridden for an entire year. And so it's just amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we saw a lot of salvations, a lot of people get filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, it was just an amazing trip top to bottom. And that was in a village of uh, Mauko that was considered like one of the hardest reaching villages. They sent us there. <laughs> it was like the it was a hard place. To, it was the hard soil. And they sent our team in there. And we just saw, I mean, I think we saw more salvation and healings in that area than in any other village. And, and so why do I say that? Because you are in an apostolic resource center. Do you know that? Like, the, like the, the, the call in this church is to just transform and equip. And so God is like, if you're here, it's because you're called to be a breaker. It's because you're called to walk in the apostolic. It's, it, it doesn't mean you have to go to Africa. It can be in, the, in your city, in your neighborhood, in your family, in your workplace. And so if you're here today, you are here to move in those areas. That God, if you, if you don't be surprised if he's sending you to the hard areas to plow because you have the anointing to plow it easily. Anyway, all right, um, so what I wanna do real quick is, if you need breakthrough, and it doesn't matter what it is, we're just gonna move right now because you need to, like, we need to move in that breaker anointing and not just hear about it. If you need breakthrough, physical, if you need healing right now, raise your hand in the air. You, you, you just need physical healing. Okay, keep your hand in the air, I see you guys. All right, so I, what I want to happen is if you need breakthrough otherwise, apart from physical healing, whatever that is, you know what it is. doesn't matter if you need to even disclose it. But if you need breakthrough, I want you to raise your hands too. So everyone, keep, put your hands up right now if you need breakthrough. Okay, now every, keep your hands up. Those around them, those in the back, those in the sides, team, you guys can go ahead. You guys can ask these guys more stories uh, after service today, but let's lay hands and let's just release the breakthrough of the Lord because all these testimonies, these things that we share, all they are is the goodness of the Lord manifesting. It's the kingdom being released. And it's, it, it's what it looks like for the kingdom to come. It doesn't involve, you know, praying and fasting for a hundred days to see a breakthrough. It actually just depends on us putting a demand on the anointing that he's already put in our lives. So just right now, wherever you guys are,